Hi church family, hope you're doing well today. So just want to update you a bit, especially on Warnford at the moment. Uh, just want to talk a bit about prayer and fasting and looking forward to Christmas and the new year. So a bit of news for you all. But firstly, uh, Hebrews 12, 26 and 27. God there talks about shaking the heavens and the earth. And the point being that what can be shaken in us is shaken away that what cannot be shaken remains and I really feel that for us together and for us individually that I think we're coming into a bit of a season of disturbance. God's going to be disturbing some stuff and it's important to know when those things happen that we're not just trying to get everything back together or make it all nice or um, back to normal but that within it we recognise, God, shake out of me the stuff that's not of you, that what remains is you. It's a great promise. And even this last Sunday, well done everybody who was there, we had a bit of disturbance. Uh, we weren't able to meet in the hall. Unfortunately, I hadn't seen a text. And so we arrived on Sunday morning at nine to find the hall was shut. Uh, and suddenly we've got to uh, create the dining room space into a place where we can gather and where, where we can meet with God. And I know for both John and I, we both reflected on the fact that we hadn't had the best communication. And often when communication fails and we can talk about so easily, like communication is king, we've got to communicate well. If our lives are based on good communication, then the moment good communication doesn't happen, we fail. And John and I so easily found ourselves on Sunday feeling frustrated, dare we say cross or angry, about the whole situation. And I want to fill you in because I was able to meet with the school yesterday and we can communicate where things are at. But I know John and I both were then challenged individually by God that we're not called to great communication, we're called to great love. And love and blessing do not flow from a place where we understand everything, we get it all and we're moved naturally, it flows supernaturally. And I love the fact that um, we printed out some more uh, contacts on Sunday and we're giving those out and the front of contact, it says Blessing Warnford. And hey, I maybe felt a bit different <laughs> than that, but we were both challenged to go, wait a minute, we're here to bless, we're here to encourage and we're here just doing grace, make the best of it. So thank you to everyone who helped make the best of the situation. But I can communicate, but I do challenge us all. What happens when communication fails? So in terms of Warnford, as you know, the hall floor, unfortunately, um, from being redone two summers ago, 21, um, things weren't done well. And they've been in a real battle with the people who did it. I'm not here to point fingers, please. Keep this information between you and God and let's pray. Um, and it's been really difficult for the school and then difficult for us because bits of the floor have come up and it's been frustrating all round. Um, and the persons refused to put it right and then said they would put it right. Over the summer we were anticipating they would put it right and they just kept putting it off, which of course is frustrating for us, but how much more for the school who need to use that space effectively week in, week out. What happened then last week was, as we know, a portion of the floor had sort of exploded, looked like something out of some sort of uh, horror film, um, and more of the floor went actually towards the end of last week, and so they took the decision for safety reasons to close the hall. Um, please, please be praying. They, there unfortunately has to be a court case around this, so solicitors are involved in those sort of things, but um, the funds should be released that then contractors can get in. And we're anticipating the next three Sundays having to meet in the dining hall and not in the, the main hall uh, and um, believe in um, and the school are desperate to get that done and they are working hard on that. So really encourage you to be praying and choosing good. That's what blessing is. We talked about it at the beginning of the year. It is your calling and it is my calling. We're here to bless and not curse. If we want to obey the commands of Christ, that's what we do easy to get cross. And I want to challenge you because I appreciate the dining hall isn't the best space. Uh, but all across the world, people meet 
in difficult places, places they wouldn't choose. A lot of people meet together in prison because that's where they are because of their faith. And so I think it's a good challenge to us that we want to work hard to make that space work. We're going to look at whether we can get some drapes in to maybe help with a sound. But really just all of us, can we embrace grace? And, and can we make Jesus the centre of what we're doing? And to see a what could just be a difficult, frustrating time be a brilliant, beautiful time. And we'll start to see that on Sunday. So in terms of very practically, we learned a lot from this weekend. We're trying to keep everything safe and get everybody in. Can I encourage you that if you want to chat to people, you've got two great options. Either get to church a bit earlier. It's OK, you're allowed to. You don't have to get there at 10.30 or 10.35. Yeah. Um, but also, as we talked about this weekend, love one another. That Because we need to, for these next few weeks, get everybody out quite quickly so we can put the infrastructure back in to bless the school. Um, can you invite someone around for lunch? Can you be open to go to church and just think, hey, whoever it is, you know, you might have pre-planned or just to invite a couple people. Maybe don't go for just your mates or people you know, but it's a great opportunity to love one another, to actually fulfil that great command that we talked about on Sunday. Practically speaking, um, as we shared on Sunday, the if I'm, face, if I'm at the front now, the uh, small wing, smaller dining hall, um, what would be to my left if I was facing you from the front of how we did church on Sunday. Um, the sound is better there. Um, I think the team did it a fantastic job because it's really hard to get the sound right. Um, and we wouldn't need it to be loud enough so everyone can hear um, and not so loud so it hurts. And, and, and that's not easy. Uh, and so can we have a lot of grace and blessing for those people? They work really, really hard to, to nail that. But if particularly maybe you have hearing aids or struggle when it sounds a bit echo, we really encourage you. We're going to work to create more space on that side. Um, I found the, the main side fine and many of you did, I know. Uh, and so that's just a practical step you can take. And can we just be, please be praying that in this season we really encounter God and meet him afresh. This weekend we have unbroken praise. So Alex's heart to uh, unite churches. We actually welcome Christians from the area to the funny space, shall we say. So we could do a little bit extra help um, if you are available at two o'clock on this Saturday. Can you let me know? I just need about six or eight of us to shoot in for like 25 minutes and we'll get all the tables cleared well, which means Alex and team can come in and they can create the space they want to create so that loads of people from across the area can come and worship King Jesus. How beautiful is that? The good news is then we can leave that set up for this Sunday. So uh, hopefully that shares um, with you a bit of uh, info, you understand what, what's going on and why, but whereas some of you might feel like, oh well, I'll go online then for three weeks, I challenge you to be there. Um, it's beautiful and brilliant that we've carried on having a fantastic YouTube community in a sense that I know it's helped so much with continuity, with connection, with us all being to able to uh, rejoice and thrive in what God's doing. But it should never be an optional thing. It's there for those that are unwell, those that are away, those that can't make it. It's not there as something to be an option, you know, because if you're not in the room, you can't affect the atmosphere and you can't be one who brings Jesus closer to others. So please encourage you to be around. Just looking ahead, so the week beginning Monday the 20th of November, we're going to have our third week of prayer and fasting. Um, it's just been a joy this year, actually. Um, I've never been part of church family praying and fasting that much. Um, probably more to come. Uh, taking Monday to Friday of that week to pray and fast. We're putting out what we want to be fasting for, specifically around building, around leadership and around young people. Uh, and we're going to finish, though, 
that week with a night of prayer that Paul Fisher and Simon Morgan are going to organise. We'll let you know more, but there'll be the opportunity to either pray for an hour or all night, uh, I think, in the upper room, which is fantastic. And really believe that the greater work of God that we are seeing this year, the greater sense of his presence um, is a big contributing factor that, to that has been your willingness to take some time to miss some meals, to seek his heart and to pray in his presence. So thank you and looking forward to that. And then as we look forward to Christmas, um, we already put out a few dates. Um, please really be aware of those. We'll be doing um, a bunch of stuff Christmas week. Uh, there'll be a games night um, that the young people are organising. There's cat party. There'll be a meal uh, at the bridge. Uh, and then we've got our Regency Ball. I really want to underline that this is our great chance, whether you like it or not, to go and have some fun. Yeah, It will be fun. You don't have to dance, but we don't do a huge amount of social sort of just fun stuff. And I think it's a great opportunity just to get dressed up a bit, put on some smart clothes, to go and have some food together, just a couple hours for the whole family, and uh, to embrace some uh, 17th, 18th century dancing. I've never done it, I'm up for it. Um, it would be some great fun. So please, that's on the Thursday before Christmas, six till eight, we're gonna have some food um, there. And then we've got carols on the podium on the Saturday. We're not meeting on the Sunday, and then we're meeting on Christmas day. And just finally, uh, looking ahead into 2024, we have a team from YWAM. Norway, 11 young people are chosen to come and serve the purposes of God here. Uh, they're coming for 11 days from the 18th of January to 29th of January. They'll be here for two weekends. Um, there'll be details coming out really soon of um, what we'll be doing over that time. But if you could like try and make sure you're around those two weekends, um, if possible. Uh, and I think there'll be some things there which will be life-changing. And, and I know God is sending us people, not because we're twiddling our thumbs, but because the finger of God is at work and the kingdom is coming. Because all my life you have been saved. Goodness of God